Hey, hey, Tony Gass is here. Now, I've seen a few times people asking about Nelly and Ashanti. I really don't have much to say about that. But I just figured since y'all interested in it, I will touch on that from a relationship coach perspective of how that works when someone rekindles their relationship. Now, for one, don't get your hopes up because a lot of times we have a soul tie and we sit still and we wait and we hoping that somebody come back from the past and we don't move on. We're afraid to move on. We're afraid to heal. We're afraid to get over them because we sitting and we hoping and we waiting and then we look and we see this situation like Nelly and Ashanti and it bring hope that, oh, maybe my ex going to come back. Don't hold your breath. Don't hold your breath. Don't get your hopes up. And it really don't mean nothing yet because they've been back together for a blink of an eye. And Nelly, you know, he has been out there. He has been around. He done done his thing. But one thing happened is sometimes people will circle back around too when they motion kind of slow down. So it's like if you meet a man and he's at his height, and there's just a plethora of women and so many women and so much money. It's hard for a man who isn't a devout man of God to want to settle down in that time. It's really hard. And especially if you got, if the woman has motion of her own and she got money and she got things going, she's not finna sit and wait on a man. She's not finna chase a man. She's not finna get played with. She gonna go on about her business too. So a lot of times when you notice a relationship, you kind of got to be in the same place almost. And, and it is gender specific. So sometimes a woman could be up and she could be balling out doing her thing and she'll settle down for a man because she's not really worried about counting her options and all of that because a woman in most cases won't love and companionship and stability whereas a man a man's money and fame buys him access to more women and your typical man this is excluding the devout man of god but your typical man he want to explore he want to experiment he want everything but then when nelly went to, when nelly went to performing in them clubs with a hundred people in them it got to the point to where it's like you start to see life differently. And it's like, yeah, you can still get some checks. You still get doing whatever. But when you go to that club and you saying it's getting hot in here, but it's really cold in here because ain't nobody in here. So ain't nobody. And you start to see things differently. You start to realize like, oh, okay. I'm saying it's getting hot in here, but it's cold in here. And I ain't going to be able to take off all these clothes because I ain't got no fans. And now you start to slow down. You start to pump your brakes. And then if a man has gone and he done realized some things, he probably experienced a lot of scallywags, you know. And then after the scallywags, he was with Floyd Mayweather X. And, you know, God bless her soul, but sometimes the real beautiful women that look like that, sometimes they breath stink. He could have smelt a little breath. pH could have been off. Attitude could have been bad. You don't know what it is. that, may, And it could have been him. It could have been him. You never know what happened with that. But a lot of times you see that and you see Nelly. You see the lady, I think her name Miss Jackson. You're like, man, they look like a great couple. Look like they're going to have great kids, great genetics. Kids probably would have looked like they fell off the tomato truck. Because a lot of times when the parents got too many genes... And the man is seen as a handsome man and the woman is seen as a beautiful woman. A lot of, a lot of times the kids look like they fell off the truck. And so you never really know. Now him and Nelly, I mean him and Ashanti, they more looks compatible. And what I mean by more looks compatible is that Miss Jackson, she in a different kind of, Ashanti is beautiful as well in her own right. But when I say the trends of society. So that Miss Jackson, she kind of had that look that is trending that a lot of the guys are worshiping and praising. It's, it's overrated to me. 
it just it's a little overrated to me and i just know god didn't give everybody everything so if a person features is perfect based on beauty standards i'm expecting they they breath or that cooter bow to be stained if if a person is absolutely something is wrong it, it, they be it be passing gas all the time or doing something all the time just in grown house something going wrong because god just ain't make nobody perfect and so but whereas ashanti she beautiful but it's more like it's like the the most beautiful girl in the hood you know the most beautiful girl in the neighborhood it ain't like a she anywhere she go based on all the different races and cultures that she gone, everybody going to stop and stare. It's like, to a lot of cultures, they're going to see her beauty. And then to other cultures, they might just overlook it. But when somebody is what they call racially ambiguous, then every culture kind of see themselves in them. And racially ambiguous is not based on skin complexion. Because there's people with darker skin who still look racially ambiguous. Like you still could see... The, either their eyes or their nose, it looks like it come from a different part of the world. It, not, it don't all just look like India just because they dark skin or it don't all just look like Africa or Middle East or whatever. You'll see different parts of them. And so that determines how they seen around the world. So like over here, my look in Europe, I'm in Europe right now. And right now I'm in Poland to meet up with one of my mentees uh, who won national championship with but now he playing over here over here my look is real basic like this ain't nothing now if i was six fold probably a few shades darker i probably be turning heads everybody probably be looking at me so that's what you got to understand the difference so now what nelly got he got a beautiful woman but it's more like down to earth humble relatable and a shanty personality Based on the videos and stuff I done seen, it looked like it's next level. Their personality, just like real fun loving. They were showing, somebody did a comparison of him and Miss Jackson to where Miss Jackson wouldn't really play with him and laugh and sing and act a fool with him. But then they showed him and Ashanti and she laughed and she played with him. And see, really, I think that they could have always been a fit, but I don't think they was they was ready to settle down. And, it, and I feel like it could have been one or the other. You can never tell. But one on one ready to settle down when they was talking back in the day, or one of them could have already had something that was there lingering before they met, and they just was afraid to like cut that off and get us a shot. But now I'm gonna tell you, Nelly and Ashanti, based from a matchmaker perspective, which is what I do on the side, you can't afford it. Don't you can't afford it. Don't write me. And from a relationship coach perspective to me Nelly and Ashanti look like a perfect couple they look like a perfect couple as long as Nelly don't let the nonsense and the foolishness and old scallywag come in shaking her booty and distract him they look like a perfect couple the other thing about it a lot of people say marriage is a business deal relationship is a business deal they could do business together so really Nelly and Ashanti is a broke man's Jay-Z and Beyonce Nelly and Ashanti, if they want to, and I think this is what they're saying too, if they want to do a tour together, and I feel like they was already doing stuff together, they could rack up some money. They could rack up some money because Nelly was the Drake before Drake. Like that singing, rapping, that Nelly was like the first person to really do that on a high level. And like he was the Drake before Drake, but Nelly all black. So he couldn't cross over. Well, he crossed over, but he just didn't become as big as Drake because of color lines and because of prejudice. Because Nelly is St. Louis. He's St. Louis, St. Lunatic, and it's different than Drake because Drake, mama white. And so, and Nelly probably got a little sprinkle of Caucasian in him somewhere. Could be Indian, Cherokee, Seminole, but... And also the time when Nelly came, we didn't have all the technology we got that Drake could take advantage of today. So Nelly really could have been the Drake and had him a plane and had him, you know, all of that right there that Drake got. But he still got a little motion 
the well him and Ashanti. Now Ashanti, she can't really sing, but she she could do good enough. Like she ain't got no she ain't no Adele or nothing like that now. She ain't no Beyonce, but she could she could hold a little note and make a little music. And but she ain't finna fall out. But she got hits. She got hits. And if she did something with Ja Rule, now if Nelly cool with Ja Rule and they let Ja Rule get on there now. And the three of them, they could make millions today right now doing a little tour and they could do not the arenas but they could do bigger than them little clubs that Nelly them been caught in and that's another thing what you got to realize it's like if you break up with your ex or you and your you and your ex y'all broke up but then you go to doing good y'all like or you go to doing bad they go to doing bad but both of y'all had this business idea and both of y'all kind of liked each other or loved each other. And now y'all see where, man, we could come together and we could be a power couple and we could do business. Then you circle back around and make it happen. Hey, got to go. Got a call coming in. God bless you. We'll talk soon.